Starting with Steph, cause she's the best She's gonna help you get your CTS, yeah Ain't nothing can keep me down Stephanie! Hello everybody, welcome to episode 11 of Study with Steph um, this is a podcast video cast where I go by all the subjects that are on the CTS exam bit by bit and just help myself identify things that I need to study for, help you identify things that you need to study for. And today we are talking about electrical systems. And I have with me Jim Maltese, VP of Quality Standards at Level 3 Audiovisual. Hey, Jim, how you doing? Hey, Steph. Thanks for having me on. Of course. So you were kind of a great person for me to invite on this show today because you were also teaching a CTSD prep class at Infocom this year, correct? Yeah, that's right. It's the three-day class. Um, it is a prep class. So hopefully we learn a lot, but the intent isn't to really take deep dives. It's just to do an overarching review of everything that is CTSD. Perfect. So the idea is that you will have studied by yourself beforehand, but that you're coming and you're just trying to get a last minute kind of cram session in there, correct? Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Um, and I know there are CTS classes at Infocom as well. I think there's there's one for each um, certification. So CTSD, CTSI, CTS. Um, so I'm still considering whether or not I want to do the three-day CTS class. I think I'm going to see how studying goes, but I can't see how it would hurt. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the instructors they have at Infocom are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I think you said you, you had hope on before. So, I mean, she's, yeah. And she's teaching star. one of them. And then, um, it's like hope and somebody else on one of them. And then it's Chrissy, Sarah, and someone else on the other one. And I know Chrissy as well. So fantastic it, people. Yeah. You, you can't go wrong with either class. So they're, they're all AV ninjas. They're, they're all <laughs> exactly. the best of the best. Yeah, exactly. So I guess let's hop in today. We're talking, I, I put off recording this episode. I'm not going to lie because I just did not, I just did not want to learn Ohm's law. I didn't want to do math, <laughs> but people kept messaging me and being like, you haven't put the Ohm's law episode up yet. Have you? And I was like, no, I just, I'm scared of that chapter. I don't want to <laughs> do it. Um, uh, but you know, it came time. Um, and as I was studying, I was getting really mad because, you know, the, in the chapter, it tries to break it down for you. Right. And it's mm -hmm, like, okay, mm -hmm. here are all the pieces of electricity. But then I was getting mad because why is current called I in formulas, but impedance is not I impedance is Z. Yep. And yeah, so I was just, I was getting real messed up they, when I was trying to study this. By they myself, try to keep so. it as easy as possible for you, but right? You got like, voltage being this? E or V. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> the worst. And so, yeah, I was like, why is there even a Z? Like that is the most, that's the worst thing y'all could have done. So, yeah. yeah. So I guess I wanted to start by like keeping it just starting really high level, super basic, and then kind of getting a little more into the nitty gritty as we go along, if that sounds good. Perfect. Well, I've got, I've got equations. I've got great. toys. So we're, we're going to, we're going to we're, have we're, a good show. Okay, great. Yeah, so yeah. at like, when we're thinking about electrical systems, when I was mm -hmm, trying to mm -hmm. think like, what does this have to do with me? Like, why do I have to learn this? I was like, okay, everything in AV works because of electricity at some, at its most basic level. Like most things you got to plug them into a power source for them to go and do things. So that's, I get why you need to learn this stuff, because if you don't understand the process of electricity, it can lead to overloading circuits. It can lead to electrocuting yourself, I guess, at, at the worst. Um, so I understand why you need to understand how this stuff works and why you should understand the math behind it. So you can kind of do some quick figuring things out when you're like on a job. So totally understand it. But when it came to actually understanding it, that's when I was like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> well, I mean, so, I mean, let, 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 let's start at that high level, right? Okay. So, so Ohm's law, right, mm -hmm. was, was formulated or was really observed by, by this guy. I think it was George Simon Ohm. Mm -hmm. And what he had was, you know, so he, he had a way to create charges, right? Okay. And so... He had a way to kind of build up voltage on, 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 on these two different metal things. And when he touched them, he would measure current uh, by how much pain he felt. All right. That's, that's like yeah. extra. Like, why did you do that to yourself? Well, because that was science, man. It's all about <laughs> science. And so he built up charge. He, he built up voltage and then he touched it. And if he built up more voltage, it hurt more. 
Right. And if he built up only a little bit, it hurt less. So he's like, all right, okay. So if we have more voltage, we have more current. That that kind of makes sense, right? And, mm-hmm. and it's going through me. It's passing through me. So um, it's it, hurting more. Right, exactly. But I, I'm one type of resistance, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's passing through me. Resistance is going to be how much it's um, impeding the flow, how much it's trying to slow down that flow of current, that eye, the, the, mm-hmm. the nonsense eye. Yes. Um, then what he found is, you know what? I'm having so much fun hurting myself. Let's bring someone else in. And so he found when he held hands with someone uh-huh. and there was now twice the resistance, right? You're, the, the flow of electricity is going to flow through two bodies now. It hurt less. Okay. So that must mean there's like less current going on. Okay. So mm-hmm. now we, the, so, so, so now we've got some relationship between resistance to the flow. It's got to pass through these two bodies. So does that mean that there's more impedance then if there's two bodies? Okay. Exactly. I'm, oh, look at exactly. me. Exactly. I think at that point, it technically would have been resistance because okay. I, I think it was just DC. So there wasn't any, okay. any frequency information yet. It right. oh, might've been yelling. And so there, there might be some impedance going on, but, mm-hmm. but resistance at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. It. And, and, and that's, that's what started it, right? We've, we've got voltage. We've, we've got this pent up charge. We've got this electromotive force. That's where E comes from. Um, and then as soon as you create a circuit, as soon as you create a path from that potential down to ground, something's going to flow. So we've right. got resistance. We've got, it's going to travel on a path. We've got bodies, we've got resistors, we've got a light bulb, whatever, something is going to s- try to stop that flow. So that's resistance. And then we've got the flow. So voltage, current resistance, and oh my God, let, we have a law and let's name it after me, George Simon Ohm. So we, we, we've got Ohm's law. Great. Okay. But if that's too sciencey, uh huh. in college, right? I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not recommending, but we've all tried like a funnel. I'm not saying what goes into the funnel, but I'm saying we've tried a funnel. Uh huh. And so if we think about a voltage as how high the funnel starts. So mm-hmm. if it's just your friend holding it, that's just a little tiny voltage. If it's like at the top of the building, that's a lot of voltage, right? So okay. we've got a lot of energy up there. Yeah. The resistance is going to be the size of, of the pipe, right? Okay. For, for, for the funnel. And so if you, if it's just your friend, um, it's just a little tiny voltage. If it's just a, a little tiny hose, that's no big deal. I can yeah. handle it. If you're at the top of a building and it's like just a stack of garbage cans, whoever is going to get that, there's going to be a lot of beverage yeah. flowing down that. So now, now it's the same thing, right? The, the size of the, the, the tube is going to be resistance. The amount of water. Water. Is going to, yes. The amount of water that is able to flow down that hose is going to be the current. Okay. And the, the, the size where, where it all starts is, is how much voltage you got in there. So that's okay. another way of thinking about it. That makes sense to me. I'm not going to say it makes more sense to no, me because it made me look bad, it. but yeah, yeah, I've we, read about that. We have that. an experience. We've read no, about that. Yeah, no, yeah. I've read about that and, and yes. seen that in teen movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so when it comes to when it breaks it down in the book and it's like, okay, so all of these things have a relationship. Are there other ways to remember like, okay, voltage is electrical potential difference, but the current is measured in amps. Like, is there a good way to remember what measurements go with what? Yeah. I mean that, well, that, that, that's the question. So the, the, the form I usually see Ohm's law is Mm -hmm. V equals I R. Okay. Yeah. We know voltage. Right, because right. that's V. Yeah, we know resistance because that's mm-hmm. R, and then you got current, which is the other thing. Is so that, just just the other thing? Yeah, it's just the other thing. Yeah, yeah. So it it is. It's an unfortunate formula. <laughs> that's that. That's where we are. For sure. So, do you want to show me a little bit of charts and things to remember how to do the math yeah. portion? Yeah, yeah. So bear with me. I am okay. going to share a document camera. V is IR. And so um, the the way, the, the reason they put this in here like this is because if you are 
looking for V. If you're looking for the voltage, the intent mm -hmm. is you cover up that part of it. And yep. then V is equal to IR. If you're looking for R, you cover up the R and R is equal to V, v over, over I. I. And so it's the same thing over uh, on the power side, mm -hmm. um, which is fantastic. You know, that that's super easy. Yeah. What I like is this guy because okay. it's just, it's, it's way easier to kind of wrap my head around and you don't have to cover anything up. And it also has um, our friendly names there. So if you're looking for voltage, now you've got three formulas to choose from depending on what they give you. Yeah. Okay. And so a, a common one that CTS asks is, um, let's say we've got uh, a, a loudspeaker that has eight ohms mm -hmm. and um, we are going to push, uh, I don't know, it, and, and, and it's, it's going to be a, a, ah, I just messed that up. It's going to be 27 volts. So okay. we've got volts. And we've got uh, ohms. And we've got ohms. And so they're probably going to look for what power uh, yep. is going to be driven. And so then we just go over to the power side and we've got volts and we've got ohms, resistance. And so this is going to be the formula we can use V squared over R. Okay. How do you get, why is it V squared? Oh, my friend. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put this to the side. So this is where we get into the fun algebra stuff. Okay, great. So bear with me. Okay. Um, all right. So Ohm's law, everyone knows, is equal to V, v equals IR. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, it's, it's really it, its cousin or its brother is going to be, I believe it's the Joule's equation. And that is equal to P equals V times I. So this is the work. Power is the work that's done when we have a certain um, force and we have a flow of current. Okay. Okay. So these two guys are like the power equations of, and I don't mean power. I mean like the, the, the just the majestic equations of electricity. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, we said that P is equal to V squared over R. How do we get there? Okay. So what we do is Remember how we said we don't really like the I because, I mean, it's, it's important for safety. It's important for power calculations. But uh -huh. why don't we just figure out some way to get rid of the I in both of these equations? So okay. the easiest way for me to do that is on this one, I'm going to say I is equal to V over R. That's fair, right? Because I can just mm -hmm. divide both sides by R. Mm -hmm. So I is equal to V over R. And now I'm going to take this bad boy and put it in here. So P is equal to V times I. So now I just said I is equal to V over R. And now, oh my God, it's V squared over R. Okay. Okay. So that's all. That's all this circle does for you. Is okay. Instead of having to interpolate all that and, and, and readjust all the formulas and get, this does it for you but it basically comes from this type of substitution. Got you. So it's probably going to be in a word problem. And the easiest yeah. way to do this is to figure out, okay, what do I have and what am I solving for? That's the name of the game. There's, okay. there's, and that's why, especially with Ohm's law, especially at the, the CTS level, they can't really trip you up all that much. They're, they're going to give you two values. Yeah. Right. And so some, so one trick might be, um, did you learn about constant voltage systems yet? Like, like uh, when you have a whole bunch of loudspeakers stringed yes. together on. So do you remember what voltage those are commonly, especially in the U.S.? Um, not off the top of my head. It's going to be a 70 volt system. Okay. And so now if they say, oh, we've, we've got a distributed loudspeaker system in the U.S. I don't know if they can even say that. They're going to tell you 70 volts. Okay. Um, and then, then that's your V, right? V is going to be 70 volts. Okay. And then they'll probably say, oh, you've got, um, you, you've got 160 watts of loudspeakers tapped on that line. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then that's power. So what impedance do you expect to see? Well, um, number one, I can just see that I can swap the P and the R here. So this can be mm -hmm. translated R is equal to V squared over P, or I can just come over here and say, I'm looking for impedance or ohms V squared over P. 
I, I, I got that right there. Because so, I already have those two. Exactly. So I'm looking for R, and then so, I just substitute that in there, V squared okay. over P. Okay. All right. And that's you, and you just PEMDAS it, right? So you just, you know, 70 squared and then divide yes. that by 160. Yes. Okay. Yes. PEMDAS. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And then um, if you wanted to get crazy... Mm -hmm. in, in like there's the test and, and the test yes go go absolutely go through it um step by step um in the real world though you can 70 volts is actually 70.7 volts okay and then if we square that it's going to be like 4,990 or something like that it's mm -hmm. basically it's going to be 5,000 so in the real world, if you ever need to find the impedance given uh, a certain wattage or if you need to find the wattage given a certain impedance, mm -hmm. this V squared is always going to be 5,000. So that's just a very quick way to, to do it in your head. If you have a constant voltage system, if you have a 70 volt system, V squared is always going to be 5,000 and then it becomes very simple to, to do you know, the, the, the math either in your head or you'll, you'll have a calculator on the, uh, on the exam. Mm -hmm. Got it. And when you said that in the U S it can only be 70 volts, are there any other like U S specific things like that, that I should remember for the test? It, they're, they're not going to trip you up with that. Okay. Um, just for your own edification is 25 volt constant voltage systems. You see that a lot in um, older schools. Mm -hmm. There's 70 volt, which is, which is the most common. And then in Europe, a hundred volt systems are also fairly common. Okay. Um, and, th and that's why they're going to have to give you that information because it's an internationally accredited um, certification. And so they can't assume a constant voltage system is going to be 70 volts. They have to tell you that. And so they're, it, it, they're more likely to give you, uh, you know, more pieces to the puzzle. Yeah. It's like, a, an like another word problem like that. That's exactly, Got it. That's exactly it. Got you. Can you go through some more like common ways this is said as a word problems, just so that I can kind of familiarize myself with it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, okay. And I'm not sure in CTS, do they make you do um, series resistors and parallel resistors? Yes. Uh, well, like series versus parallel circuits is what Perfect. the book says. Yeah. Perfect. So, um, cause that, 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 that's going to be very common. Okay? okay. And so they might say we have a 70 volt system. Okay. Okay. And then I have my loudspeakers hooked up in parallel. Uh-huh. So, okay, so real this... quick, parallel versus series. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Parallel, it means the series is like the current flows through every device in the circuit, but parallel, the voltage is from the source and it goes through every pathway. That's like kind of how the book explained it, but it didn't make the most sense to me. So the, the, the way I like to remember that series in parallel is... Mm -hmm. um, is it like if, if we go back to the to the flow idea? Yeah. Okay. So we, we've got this voltage coming in. And in series, this is the the symbol for a um, a resistor. It's it's a mm -hmm. it's a jagged line, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like a sawtooth. Yeah. So in series, you're going to flow through each resistor one at a time. There's only one flow in series. Okay. Okay, but in parallel, what might happen is you've got this flow and then it splits up into three branches. And now, so the flow, the current, the flow is branched off. So the, the voltage stays the same um, throughout, throughout this entire parallel circuit, but mm -hmm. the current is split up. Okay. Here, what happens is the voltage, a little piece of the voltage gets taken up here. A little piece gets taken up here, and then before you know it, you're at zero volts. So the the it's like the the voltage is chewed off um, after it flows through each resistor in a series circuit okay. in parallel because you only have two points. the The voltage goes to zero from here, but the flow is split up three different ways. Okay. Okay. So that makes sense. On, on a seventy volt system, 
it's very rare that uh, you wire loudspeakers in series. Okay. I mean, unless you're trying to do something funky or, or whatever, it usually doesn't happen. Usually what happens is on the back of a, a loudspeaker, especially like a ceiling loudspeaker, you see a Phoenix connector like this and they've got plus minus, plus minus. And so your, your cables come in, you put it there and then your cables go out. So the voltage is flowing to, to all the loudspeakers at the same time with, okay. with several different things. So um, this is commonly how loudspeakers are wired up. Yep. And then it goes back. So these loudspeakers are wired in parallel. Okay. okay. And just to, to keep it easy, mm -hmm. um, I am going to say that they are tapped at 30 ohms. Okay, because do you remember how to find? Okay. Will you move your paper up a little bit? Yes, of course. Oh, thank you. Do you remember how to find the, the effective impedance of three loads wired in parallel if they're the same impedance? No. You can just divide by the, the, the number. By of the, the number? Load. Oh, Yeah, okay. exactly. And so, um, so we've got 30 ohms and I've mm -hmm. got three. So my effective impedance is going to be 30 divided by three. Okay. So then it's okay. just, yes, yeah, so then it's just 10. 10 ohms. Okay. Perfect. So um, they might say we've got 70 volts. We've got three loudspeakers tapped at, at 30 ohms each. Um, what power is required to drive this? Okay. So um, we know we've got R. Mm -hmm. We know we've got V. Mm -hmm. And so now P is just going to be. V squared over R. Okay. Okay. And that's going to be, we'll, we'll keep it simple. So that's going to be 70 squared, squared over 10. Okay. And then that's 4,900. And so that's going to be 490. 10. Yeah. 490 Watts is required to, to drive, to drive these loudspeakers. Okay. Perfect. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And then the, the other thing they might throw at you is um, they're not going to do it in loudspeakers because it's very, like I said, it's very rare to, um, to wire loudspeakers in series, but let's just say now uh, they have some circuit. And if we want to get fancy, we can draw like a, like a, a battery symbol and mm -hmm. it's going to go through a couple of these resistors. Okay. And so they might also say, and let's say this is um, 20 ohms, 20 ohms, and we'll go, we'll go classic. Uh, and we've got 10 volts. So mm -hmm. before we said um, you can find the effective impedance of loads wired in parallel by dividing it. Mm -hmm. Now we're in series. Yeah. So that's different now. That's going to be different because now it's going to flow through each one and you just add them up because if, you know, resistance is going to be oh. a position to flow. So when you're in series, the voltage has to flow through each stinking one. So it's like collecting one after them. another. Yeah. And so it just keeps on getting pounded by these resistors. So okay. you can just add them up. So, so it's going to be effective is 50. Perfect. And now what I want to know is what is the current flowing there? Okay. So we have R and we have V. Yes. So then we're doing V squared over R again. Well, so let's, let's, let's take a look back here. So we are looking for I this time. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. We're looking for the current. Okay. Yeah. We're looking and for the we current. Have, and we have V and R. We have V and we have R. And so if so we're looking for the current. So then it's just V over R. Yep. That's it. Okay. Got you. So then it's just going to be 50 over 10. That's it. So then it's just five. Five what? Oh, God. Um, what? 
No, I'm wrong. Amps. It's amps. Yes, that's the one. Come on. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Because yeah. Watts is power. I get 100%. I I get power mixed up with yeah. current for some no, reason. I get it. Well, so along those lines, Steph, what is the power in this circuit? Okay. Okay. So if we're looking for power, which is watts, and we have we have V and R. Yeah. So now we're doing V squared over R. There we go. So now it's going to be 10 squared over 50, right? Yep. So then it's 100 mm -hmm. divided by 50, which is 2. 2? Watts. Yes. Come on. I did it. You got this stuff. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you can want you, to, was that? Can you explain to me again the relationship between power and um, volt? No, what is V again? Voltage. Yeah. Voltage, yeah. Can you yeah. explain to me the relationship between that? Like how in Ohm's law, it's V over I R, but the power equation is P over. Yep. So um, it, it comes down to, do you remember, uh, do you remember physics? Do you uh, remember like force equations and energy equations? So I did not take physics ever because I didn't think I would need it. And that's definitely come back and to bite me in the ass as I've aged. I was like, <laughs> I'm not, I was like, I'm going to be a writer. Like I'm not going to need physics. I'm just going to take stats. So um, I took, well, no, stats is legit. It's all good. They, the, the gist, right. Is they describe two different things. So, um, okay. when we are talking about, uh, what, well, one of, and, and again, I, I'm not saying that I partook in anything, but one of the like the most yes. mind blowing, yeah. you know, mind altering conversations yeah, I had um, in in school. And granted, I, I went to an engineering school, mm -hmm. um, but was we were all sitting around and they're like, check it out, man. Like in the physical world, force equals M.A., right? So force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So if you're in a bike and you weigh a certain mass and gravity is pulling you down, that's how much force you have, man. That's the legit Ohm's law. Okay. Okay. So if we've got a certain resistance and we've got a certain current, uh -huh. we have this like potential force that that's built up. It's not quite doing anything yet, but at least it's there. Yeah. What happens with power is now we're actually doing some work. Okay. Okay. And so it's like energy is being spent. And so now not only do I have that force, I've got some flow as well. And so they're, they're measuring two different things. One is like potential. And then one is actually work being, being done. So they can both be up, applied to the same circuit, right? Like, like, like we just did, but uh, they measure two different things. This is how much, um, force I have that this is this is how much uh, the, the the charges the electron in the current this is how much they want to move and this is how much they're moving okay okay and so the you know so f is equal to m times a this is like the the, the physical world and then here energy is equal to one half mv squared and so um, this is like you you have all this potential and force with with the acceleration and here i'm actually moving so i have momentum and I'm, I'm expending energy and so it's the same type of thing and then if you look over at our power equation this is equal to r i squared okay so it's very similar um, so if V is equal to I R mm -hmm. power is equal to R I squared. And so, it, and, and we could re uh, I messed it up. So V is equal to R I. Yeah. So that has hints of force equals mass times acceleration. And now power is equal to R I squared. And that have hints of energy equals to one half M V squared. So okay. they, they, they're, they're, they're related. They are so related and they're always present when you have current flow. 
They're mm -hmm. just measuring different things. So one is force, one is like, like potential, and then one is work being done. Okay. I can remember that. Thank you. Yeah. So other things that I wanted to make sure that I just kind of went through was in the chapter, it also talks about like safety grounding and isolated grounding. Yes. Can you explain to me like what those are? Well, okay. Okay. No, we got this. So safety ground, I mean, safety, well, safety is a part of anytime you have a ground, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's really just, um, it could be a few things. It, it's a path back to earth, um, which is safety ground, right? So the, uh, like, if you think about your house, yeah. if it were to be struck by lightning, mm -hmm. that would be very bad for the people inside. Um, and so what you want to do is provide a path that is easier for all that energy, for that huge amount of current and huge amount of voltage. It's going to want to take that safety path to ground instead of going through you. Okay. Okay. And so that, that's what the safety ground is. It's the same thing on our outlets, right? You, you have that, um, that third plug, the ground plug. Mm -hmm. And the, the great thing about that is um, that provides the, the circuit, the power. If that gets tripped, the electricity is going to go back through that ground plug instead of going through you because it's got so much less um, resistance. So why doesn't okay. everything have the third plug then? Oh, 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 oh. Now we're getting into it. <laughs> All right. So the third plug, it really comes down to um, the amount of current that a device is drawing right? okay so in houses all the outlets should really have like the outlets themselves should have yes. the third plug but some devices don't like uh like a rinky dink um dvd player or, or mm -hmm. something that does not draw a lot of power mm -hmm. it's not going to have a lot of current and so it doesn't um it, it's not that dangerous when it is pulling um power from the wall okay okay and so or like if, your phone charger or exactly. like okay that's exactly it. So mm -hmm. if you touch it as a person, it's less dangerous than if you were running like an electric stove or something beefy, like, like, a, like an elevator or something like that, where you have huge okay. amounts of power, right? We're, we're doing real work with that stuff. So mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of current being drawn. There's going to be um, obviously the same voltage, but there's a lot mm -hmm. of potential for harm there. Okay. And so that's where you see the, the three, plung, three prong plug yep. on those devices. But if it's just a little... It's just a phone charger. That's only really pulling what five, ten watts or something like yeah. that. Yeah, so not a whole lot. You're so not gonna... the things that have a lot of power, the things that run up your power bill, are mm -hmm. going to need to have that because they require a lot of current. They're more dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then an isolated ground. Mm -hmm. um, so <sighs> it, it's controversial, but an uh, an isolated ground is a. Um, it's a ground that has even less impedance to the, to the earth. Yeah, that's the best way to say it. It has even less impedance to the earth than your common outlet. Okay. And so where this comes into play is if you have like a studio or something like that, that needs mm -hmm. to be really quiet. Um, you know, if you, if you plug your devices into a typical outlet, there's going to be some noise on, on the ground. It's just inherent in all uh, electrical things. Um, and so th there's going to be some noise there, but if you're record, if you're in a recording studio, you might notice that noise. And so you want to get something really, really quiet. And so one way to do that is to have that third prong, mm -hmm. um, that state that the, the, the ground, uh, outlet, the ground part of the outlet, the ground conductor have, uh, a path to earth. That's less than I think like 10 ohms. So your run-of-the-mill outlets might have some other type of impedance, um, but an isolated ground is going to have a direct path to ground. Okay. Um, why, why is that controversial? Well, it's controversial because um, it's, it's, it can be difficult to do and okay. you pay a ton of money for it and you don't always see the benefit because uh, the, the people putting it in might not do the appropriate testing to prove that it's an okay. isolated ground. And so Thank you just you. spend $100,000 for an isolated ground system and you get no results from it. Additionally, sometimes designers will spec in isolated grounds on all AV systems because that's just what you do. 
but if you're not doing like recording studios, you really don't need that quiet of a system. Okay. You know, you, you, you can get mm -hmm. away with just typical grounds. They're, they're, they're safe enough and they provide a quiet enough system for you. Okay. Got you. So when you are say on a site or on a job and you're having to figure out like these electricity and equations on the fly, mm -hmm. like do these ever differ when you're doing, when you're trying to figure something out for like something that's a fixed installation versus something that's temporary for a rental or anything, or is it just like, d like, I know that the equations themselves wouldn't change, but mm -hmm. are there other things that you need to take into consideration when you're figuring them out? I guess I'm asking. Um, I mean, so I, I'm sure the answer would change depending on who you um, talk to. For sure. Um, and, and, a, and, a, and a good example of that, in my opinion, is uh, signal to noise. Mm -hmm. and, and this might be, no, no we'll, 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 we'll get into it. So signal to noise is the only difference is we talked about that noise floor, right? And so when mm -hmm. you have an isolated ground, you get a super low noise floor and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And so signal to noise ratio is just how much gap there is between the signal level, like the, the, the stuff you want and the noise level, the stuff you don't want. Okay. Um, and so the, the, a, a big difference between staging and rental and fixed install is how we optimize the signal to noise. Okay. And so for, um, for fixed installations where we have control over everything and we can set everything exactly how we want to do, um, typically what you do is you maximize the gain applied. And, and let's take a microphone system like speech okay. reinforcement. So um, microphone levels are like one ten thousandth of a volt, right? I'm, I'm taking this, my sound energy and I'm mm -hmm. making uh, some... I don't know, piece of ceramic or, or, or something in the microphone flutter a little bit with the, the pressure of my voice. So that's mm -hmm. not going to give me a whole lot of voltage. You know, right. it's going to be something very small. And now I'm trying to drive a 70 volt loudspeaker system off that, right? Yeah. So I've got to amplify that signal no matter what. In fixed install, what they say is amplify that signal as close to the microphone as possible because that is going to give you the cleanest signal possible. Right. And then you're going to amplify it. You know, I, I amplify it at my mixer and mm -hmm. then I amplify it at my equalizer and then I amplify it at my amplifier. And then I finally get to my um, my loudspeakers. Every time I amplify that signal, I introduce a little bit more noise. So the, the idea is if I amplify it the most at closer to the microphone, I'm going to be amplifying as little noise as possible down the line. OK. Uh, in staging and rental, what happens is. Um, they just want to give, oh, oh, and I'm sorry. So I, I did most of my amplifying at the mixer. Mm -hmm. And so when I finally get that signal to the amplifier, I might just have the amplifier at like, let's say it's got zero to 10. Most of my amplifiers are at like one, right? The amplifier is barely doing any work because it, so much amplification happens close to the microphone. Um, I'm, I'm good to go. Okay. Staging and rental guys might say, I want to give the uh, audio engineer as much power as possible just yeah. in case they need it. And so I'm going to turn my amplifier to 11 because I can, and he can run or he, he or she can run the board however they want. Mm -hmm. So the danger there is if you've got a, a good system, you're not going to be amplifying that microphone that much at the mixer because you're amplifying it so much at the back end. Okay. And that's going to just keep on amplifying the noise, amplifying the noise, amplifying the noise. So in staging and rental, I might be able to get like 150 dB SPL, which is like making your ears bleed. It's, it's illegal, yeah. very loud. I might be able to get that level, which might be great for, for my audio engineer. It's not good for my signal to noise. Mm -hmm. Whereas in installed system, I know I'm never going to, if I train, if, if, if I made that system go 150 dB SPL, I'd get thrown out. My neighbors would, would throw me out. It wouldn't be good. Um, and so I can optimize the signal to noise. But yeah. the, the physics, the equations between both staging and rental and uh, permanent install are always the same. In my opinion, it's just how you use them, how you use them to your advantage and what is your priority? Is okay. it level or is it signal quality? Okay. That makes more sense to me. 
Cause like, I know that the, that figuring things out and like equations are never going to change, you know, like the way that you have to figure out math is never going to change, but your conditions and your goals, like, I guess those are things that can change. That's exa- That's a great way to say it. Okay. Perfect. So I guess lastly, do you, you want to go over maybe a few more problems before I let you go a few more ways this can come up on the test? Sure, 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 sure. Um, if I asked you, let's say mm-hmm. you have five loudspeakers mm-hmm. tapped at 10 watts each, would you know how to find the overall effective tap of that? So the overall tap? Yeah, like what the, is... the, the overall um, wattage. Okay. The, 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 so the, the effective load. Okay. So do I know, like, is that when I have to know, like, what kind of circuit we're dealing with? Um, that, it, it, I guess it's weird. I, I, I don't want to speak too far out of line, but that, so this would be a common question. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Okay. So let's say, because when, when we have distributed loudspeaker systems, mm-hmm. um, Usually what you see on the loudspeaker is, especially a 70 volt loudspeaker, you'll see like this little dial and it has like eight ohms, mm-hmm. uh, five watts, 10 watts, 15 watts or something like that. And you select um, what, how, how loud you want that loudspeaker to be, how much load, you know, how, how hard it's mm-hmm. going to be driven. Mm-hmm. So um, one common thing that comes up a lot in, uh, in audio is let's say I have 10 loudspeakers. Yeah. Tapped at 15 watts each. Okay. On a 70 volt system. Yep. What impedance should my amplifier see? Okay. 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 So So. the really the, the, the only trick is when you're dealing with, um, tapped wattage on loudspeakers, Mm -hmm. you can just add them up or, you know, if if they tell you, you have 10, you can multiply uh, the quantity by, by the tap value. Okay. So this is when we just, so you just say 15 times 10 and that's your wattage. Okay. So how does that differ from so is it when you have the ohms that you take the ohms? Oh, and it's like the, this over the number that there are. Yes. Okay. And, and maybe, you know what? That what? was what, that was what I, what I was confusing with figuring out yeah. what the tap and, and wattage is. That, that is confusing. It, it, it is, it is confusing. One is impedance, mm-hmm. um, which is, let's say we had uh, 10 loudspeakers. Mm-hmm each um, has impedance. Can I put Z or or impedance? That's fine. Okay. I I need to learn it. (laughs) Yeah. Each has impedance of um, 80 ohms. Okay. Okay. Uh, On a 70 volt system. So let's, let's do both of these problems. Okay. Because they, and if we do it side by side, maybe it'll, 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 it'll stick in our head a little bit better so what uh what size amp do i need and i'm I'm purposely using poor language because amplifier might think current but i'm asking about power yeah okay okay All that's right. that's helpful because i'm like oh amp but you're yeah talking exactly about, yep but not amperes that's an amplifier exactly okay exactly so, uh, so let's do this one first okay the so 10 loudspeakers tapped at 15 watts each. So then we're talking about 150 watts here. Perfect. So the power effective mm-hmm. is equal to 10 times 15. And my effective load is 150 watts. watts. So okay. then, yep. And then, and then we know that we have, we're working on a 70 volt system. Yes. So we know that, v, yep. So V equals 70. So then we're solving for the impedance. Mm -hmm. And so when we're doing that, are we doing, okay. Can I look at the wheel again? Can I cheat? Of course. 
if I know where, I, yeah, okay, we got it. So we know that we have our watts and we have yes. our volts. Yes. So looking for impedance. There we go. So P, so P over V. Right. Well, we're, we're looking for the resistance. We're looking That's for right. impedance. And we know V and, and we P. know P. Okay, so V squared over P again. There okay. There we go. Yes. So then V squared over P. So then 70 squared mm -hmm. over 150. Perfect. So then 70. It's 4,900 over mm -hmm. 150. And that's 32.666 is repeating. 32.7. Yep. Um, and that is ohms. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah. And so now in the real world, this is really important because um, we want to make sure, uh, number one, we have an amplifier that can support that. Mm -hmm. And if, because I remember I can tap these um, loudspeakers at whatever I want. So if I want to verify that mm -hmm. all those 10 loudspeakers are tapped at the appropriate setting, mm -hmm. I should measure somewhere around 32 ohms when, when I measure the impedance on that line. That's a great, not only safety check for the amplifier, but mm -hmm. that is a great configuration check for, for my installer. Gotcha. Can I ask how you measure that? Is that a dumb question? Not at all. Not at all. Um, so for resistance, we can get away with something like this um, as a, a resistance meter. Oh, that's this Radio is, Shack. That's vintage. I'm all about that. And I've got Heath kit. I mean, if you want to, we, we can go create. This is from like the, the 70s. So I'm, I'm all about that. Um, but yeah, so this measures DC. When, when you don't have any frequency, you don't have any alternating current. It's just DC. We're in resistance. Mm -hmm. What happens with impedance, the difference between impedance and resistance is there is a frequency component in impedance. Okay. And so we're dealing with magnets. We're dealing with um, loudspeakers that are going to behave a little bit differently depending on how you excite them. Mm -hmm. And so that is the difference between an impedance meter and a, and a, and a, and a, okay. uh, and a, and a multimeter is the impedance meter is going to excite the circuit with a tone. Okay. So when you measure impedance with an impedance meter and mm -hmm. you're doing it on loudspeakers, you're going to hear a tone through the system because it has to excite it, right? It, it, it has to introduce that frequency element to the circuit so that, so that it, can, uh, it can get an accurate measurement of the impedance. Okay. That makes sense. Can I ask how you know off the top of your head whether you're dealing with a direct current versus an alternating current? So whether or not you need to take frequency into account, like I get that that makes sense with like anything with sound, because of course, like you're going to need frequency when you're measuring right. anything with sound. But I mean, the, the, the general rule of thumb is mm -hmm. um, if you're on a circuit board, mm -hmm. you, you're, you're probably in DC some sometimes. Okay. If you're in anything in the real world, like loudspeakers, mm -hmm. like power, Mm -hmm. um like anything like that you you have a frequency and, okay. and so you, you, you're probably going to want impedance okay that makes sense i just and then like i don't know if that's a dumb question either no not at all but not at all okay uh and and really it, it comes down to what what you're trying to drive with the power you know if if um like loudspeakers are obviously going to behave different if, if you just put a dc current on a loudspeaker it's just going to move to one spot and stay there Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of boring. You're not going to do anything with that. Yeah. What we, we, we want to see it kind of float and, and move that air so we can dance a little bit okay. you know, and, and, and that has frequency to it. So, okay. Lovely. Yeah. All right. I'll try my hand at this second problem. All right. Yeah. So now we've got 10 loudspeakers mm -hmm. wired in parallel. Okay. And do they tell, do they tell you that, or do I just have to figure that out somehow? <sighs> It would be a, so, and if you're not allowed to tell me this, it's okay. Like, no, 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 no. I'm, I am on the, um, education side. I'm not on the certification side. Okay. So we're, we're, we're good. I can say whatever I want. It would be an unfair question if they didn't tell you that. 
Yeah, which I guess I could just figure it out both ways and whichever one has the answer on there, that's probably the answer, but. But what I was going to say is probably the best answer because remember, they they don't always go for the the objectively, uh, you know, the the, the, uh, uh, unequivocally correct answer, right? Because sometimes they're looking for the best answer. Okay. And so the best answer for this, because very rarely do you wire loudspeakers in series, Mm -hmm. the best answer is going to be determined by wiring them in parallel. Okay. Okay. So when you wire them in parallel, that's not where you have to add them all up. This is where you just do uh, the 80 ohms over 10. Perfect. Okay. So then it's just 80 over 10. So that's just eight. Yep. Perfect. So we know that impedance is eight ohms. Mm -hmm. Um, So then we know we're using, we're at a 70 volt system. So then we want to know what size amplifier, AKA we want to know how many Watts. Yes. Okay. So if we have impedance and we have volts and we're looking for P. So is it V squared over R? Yes. Okay. Yes. So then we know it's going to be 70 squared over eight. Yep. So then 70 times 4,900 divided by eight is 612.5. 612.5. Watts. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Killing it. Okay. Killing it, man. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. I feel, I feel a lot better about this now. Yeah. You should. No, you're doing great. That's That's awesome. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, you were dreading Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law is the I best, was. Man. Well, to be fair, every time that I would like bring up that I was taking the CTS or something, like everyone, like I just remember everyone like shaking their head and like the first thing coming out of their mouth was like, do you have advice for me? They'd be like, Ohm's Law, Ohm's Law. I don't, I don't know Ohm's Law. And I was like, oh, okay. Anything else? Like Ohm's Law. Like, <laughs> so I was like, man, y'all are making me scared of this law. <laughs> oh, no, no. It, th- this and especially these these types of questions where it's like a two step you have to find the the effective uh, load and you have to find the effective impedance those are those are difficult yeah and 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 you killed it great well thank you for helping me you really really helped and i know that that'll help a lot of other people too because a lot of questions that i've been getting or or things people want me to help them break down is this exact thing so i know that this is going to help a lot of people i really appreciate good. it good i'm um, very happy to yeah. hear it I guess the last thing I'll ask you and the last thing you can leave me with is, do you have any like general advice for me as I continue studying and continue trying to figure this out before the test in October? General advice, because I I mean, obviously you are killing all the calculation stuff and it is going to be a breeze. So you've got that covered hundred percent. Thank you. (laughs) Honestly, you, 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 you did really well. The, what always tripped me up is um, regionally, people describe things differently and they use different words. And so what always tripped me up with uh, a a VIXA Infocom certification is they use different words to describe how how I do work. They have a very difficult job, right? They're they're trying to come up with uh, a unified international way to describe this uber complicated process of of AV design and and implementation, impossible task. In our industry and, that has like no standards. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And so I might have been describing the way I do work one way using certain words and, and you know, Steph from, um, from DC uses completely different words. And then yeah. um, my, my friend Vasanth in India might have wildly different words. Uh, and so my advice to people is usually just make sure you are comfortable and as fluent as possible in a VIXA speak. Okay. And so just get used to the way they describe things, just get used to the way they use project management. And, and for, from my perspective, those project management chapters, mm-hmm. it's not that they're difficult. It's just that that's what you have to internalize. You, okay. you have to get used to the way 
Avixa um, describes projects. Well, thank you again so much for taking time out of your day to help me. It was, it was a time, tremendous Steph. amount of help. I feel so much better about this now. Oh, good. And yeah, any 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 other questions? If, if you come up with something, don't don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, I appreciate it. Um, and for all of you watching or listening, uh, you can find all the episodes uh, on raypubs.com. We are also on Spotify iTunes, pretty much anywhere you can listen to podcasts. I, however, I do recommend watching the video version of this so you can see us uh, physically work out these problems. But uh, thank you again. I'll talk to you soon. Um, all right. I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Study with Steph.